Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a beautiful, affordable, rainforest cross-section paludarium for vampire crabs. Just like this one here, and we're not going to be using any spray foams. I call it a rainforest cross-section paludarium because it looks just like what you would see if you were standing in the middle of a rainforest stream looking at one of the banks. The best part about this build, or something very similar, is that it's super low maintenance, super low cost, and the crabs absolutely love it. Plus, you don't have to deal with any of the dramas of spray foam. So let's just jump straight into it. As with most of my builds, the first thing to create is a land and water barrier. This keeps the water section and the land section separate. And in this case, we'll be creating our river bank. I'm just using stones I found outside for this, which is our first step in keeping the cost down. The next thing I've added here is a little pump to create a waterfall. This is optional, you don't necessarily need this, but I did want a little water feature in this tank and it's not gonna cost much extra to do anyway. So I've wrapped the pump head with some foam just to stop the vibrations and I've put some filter foam on the intake end just to make sure it doesn't clog up. And I've attached a little bit of tubing just to create the waterfall. It's really simple and it only takes a few seconds to add to the tank. The next part of the process is to add some substrate. For this I'm using leka or clay balls. You can use a full layer of filter foam if you want, but I prefer the clay balls. They're really cheap, they work really well, they're great for beneficial bacteria, and they blend in really well with the rest of the scape. Even though it's covered, you do see it from the side sometimes, and it doesn't look as artificial as some other things. Just remember, when you're putting this stuff in, always make sure you go a little bit higher, just to make sure that when you put the soil on top, it doesn't sit in the water. I generally like to leave a couple of centimeters, or about an inch. Once the substrate layer is in, the next thing to do is to cover it over with some sort of a barrier. For this I like to use weed matting, but you can use window screening. Pretty straightforward, just lay it across the top of the surface of the substrate, then you can start adding soil. After adding the soil barrier, you can add some soil. For this I'm just using some organic fern mix. Any kind of soil is fine, but I just use this stuff because it's what I have lying around and I know that it works really well. I generally try to go about an inch deep or about five centimeters usually. There's no need to go that much deeper. It's plenty enough for the crabs to burrow into, plenty enough for the plants to grow. As the tank's only 30 centimeters high, we don't want to waste too much space with a big deep soil layer that's not going to get used very efficiently. Once the soil layer is in, I generally like to add my hardscape and then after that I'll start adding the plants. I already know where most of the plants are going to go so I'm going to get the hardscape in and roughly plant things out around that. You might remember this piece of hardscape from the previous biotope build. It's going to fit really well into this one. It has a nice gentle curvy slope and we're going to build on top of that. Again, this is a no cost piece of hardscape. I just take some of this stuff from the forest near my house. Just make sure when you do take stuff like this, you give it a good soak in some water, let it dry out for a while and make sure you haven't imported any ants, spiders, centipedes, whatever else you might have in your area. Generally doing just a quicker dip in some water and leaving it out to dry. We'll get rid of most of the creatures that are living inside something like this. My plant selection in this build is going to be really simple. I'm going to be using some ferns, some moss, some pilea, which is what I'm going to be adding first. And then probably a little bit of ficus pomilla. It's another creeping plant, works really well and grows really well in humid environments and gives a nice overgrown jungle look. Adding ferns is always my favorite part of any build. As soon as you start adding the ferns, the whole build starts coming together and it starts to look really established really quickly. Especially when you get bigger ferns, which are also generally quite cheap. I forget exactly how much I paid for all of these plants, but in total, it's probably around 15 US dollars roughly. So overall, it's pretty good value because they are quite big ferns. With all the main plants in now, things are starting to look really good. We're just going to add some moss, then add a little bit of the creeping plant, Ficus pomilla, and then we can start adding the really, really fine details in, such as the sand, some rocks into the water section, then we can start filling it up. It 
It's now time to add sand. You could use gravel for this, but I'm just going to be using some fine white sand. It's some stuff I had from the previous build, so I like to reuse it. Again, that's going to keep it nice and cheap. Plus, the crabs really do prefer sand over gravel. Sand is a little bit harder to keep clean, but I personally think it's worth the effort. Again, you can choose whatever you like or whatever you have lying around. The tank's basically ready to start filling up now. I'm just going to be using some tap water for this. Dechlorinated, obviously. There's no need to use RO water remineralized in my area. However, if you do have some issues with pH, definitely look into it. But generally, for most people, tap water is going to be fine as long as you add some dechlorinated to it. So it's time to turn the pump on, check out the waterfall and readjust the flow so that it's not streaming everywhere and blowing sand around. To do this, I'll just push it into place and then dab a little bit of super glue between the pipe and the rock. That'll hold it all in place nicely. I didn't end up filming the super gluing part because it was a little bit tricky to try and get everything in there and film it at the same time. So I had to move the camera out of the way just so I could get in with two hands and push down the rock and glue it. The build is just about ready now to add some crabs, but first I'm gonna add some floating plants, so some salvinia. And I've already added a little bit of dwarf sag here as well. I had a couple of sprigs left from a previous build, so I just put that in here. I'm not sure how well it's going to go. It did dry out a little bit, but it should recover, hopefully. Now the part everyone's been waiting for, I'm going to add the crabs. So it's been 24 hours since I built the tank. Normally I suggest waiting at least a month, two months or three months. The longer is always better. However, most of this stuff has come out of a build I just pulled apart or broke down about three days ago. So I'm going to be reusing a lot of it. It's all got beneficial bacteria. It's covered in springtails already. So it's essentially bioactive from the very start. I don't need to wait for the tank to cycle and I don't need to wait for the ecosystem to establish. It's already ready to go. However, if you're doing this from scratch with all new stuff, I highly suggest waiting at least a month. Things will grow in nicely and you can add your crabs and have a lot better result in the end. So these crabs are from my previous build. You can check out some of the videos from this little colony or cast of crabs. So they're red devil crabs. I've got quite a few adults, but I'm also going to be adding the entire generation of babies from the previous tank. If you plan on breeding these crabs and you want the best survival rate, I highly suggest not adding babies into the tank. However, I'm gonna be letting natural selection run its course. I don't need any more crabs, I've got hundreds of them. I do sell them locally, I don't sell them online because they have terrible shipping survival rates, so before you ask, no I can't sell you any crabs. I'd love to, however being in Europe, I'm probably not going to be able to sell it to a lot of you guys from the United States, and the shipping rates are just really bad for survival, so I'd rather not have any crabs die anyway. So these are all the babies from the previous tank. There's quite a lot there, I didn't count them, but roughly there's probably about 40 or so there, maybe 50. And I'm just going to drop them straight back into the tank. They'll find all the nooks and crannies and places to hide. Generally they'll hide in up under the water section and they'll semi-colonize some of the clay balls at the front. Otherwise they'll hide in amongst everything. This tank's been set up for about a month now, maybe a little bit longer. And there's still a lot of babies getting around so they're doing very well to avoid the adults. There will be some cannibalism as you would have saw in the introduction. That little guy did escape. He did lose a leg, but he escaped. And this kind of thing happens. It's just part of the ecosystem. The crabs are known to be cannibalistic. But if you want to keep as many alive as you can, definitely separate them. Make a little environment for those guys and you can watch them grow up. As I sell the adults out of this tank, the population of adults generally doesn't stay too high. So it's constantly rotating. So by the time these crabs get a little bit bigger, quite a few of the adults will be moved on to new homes. So I don't really have any issues with the population in this tank being too high. However, as I always say in my other videos, if you're just starting out for a tank about this size, I suggest one male, two females. You could go a bit more. Theoretically, by all the statistics, you can go six crabs. But for a better success rate for breeding, I'd just start with three. They'll have a lot of space to move in, move around, and then have lots of babies in the tank. And you'll have a bit more space for them to grow up without having to build a new tank straight away. The final thing I'll mention is make sure you have a tank lid. I know I don't show a lid in the video in this, the introduction or anything, but I do have a full glass lid that goes over the top of the tank. I just don't use it for filming because it causes a lot of reflections and it just makes a lot of issues with the editing process. So definitely make sure you have a lid, non-negotiable, the crabs will escape. So a lid is important. 
The other thing that always comes up is a heater. I have a heat mat for this tank and it sits between both of the tanks that are side by side. I have about a one centimeter gap and the heater sits in that gap nicely. It works really well. It's only a 14 watt heater and I have it on the lowest setting. You can use an aquarium heater in the water for this as well to heat your tank though I do prefer heat mats. They allow you to make a tank easier without having a big ugly heater in the way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have, don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with a little bit of cinematic footage of how this tank looks and how the crabs have been doing. Thanks everyone, see you next time.